Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Komzeski with Adam Atkinson. We are in episode two, talking about the different forms of flexible dieting. In the first episode, I talked about my original intent in even creating this and, and then over the years, uh, nuancing it in ways that I think would help more people. But probably the biggest slam, or maybe somebody taking this too far, is what has now been uh, engendered to the if it fits your macros crowd. And, and I can't even say that was their original intent. I think that was almost just a branding you know, way of saying, okay, Joe created this thing. It's called flexible dieting. I'm going to rename it this so I can get my slice of the pie. And then a lot of people took that to mean intentionally eat crappy, horrible food just to say you're beating the system. And you can do a lot in, in the, the parameters of flexible dieting. Like, like when I started this in college, part of the reason was I needed transportable, eas easily uh, consumable food sources. I couldn't eat just a, a you know, Tupperware container full of tuna fish and broccoli and rice all the time. So one of the things I used to do is I used animal crackers as a carb source, which there's no healthy redeeming value to animal crackers. It's, it's white flour. Yet I could, I could count those things out and I could take them with me in a Ziploc bag and I could have 25 grams of carbs when I needed it. And now the If It Fits Your Macros crowd, some of them just want to eat the worst foods possible and say, look, I can eat Twinkies and, and hot dogs and, and donuts and get lean. And, and I'd like to know your perspective, Adam, on how far you think that's gone and maybe I'm not giving them a fair shake. Yeah, um, I almost call this, there can be a potential amount of food bullying that goes on on Instagram. Look at what my meal plan is and my meal plan or my macros are more than yours, better than yours. My recipes are better than yours. Uh, everything smoke and mirrors on Instagram. People can say they eat whatever they want and show up to a show, but we always have to remember that bodybuilding is not an eating contest it is how you look on stage the judges do not care what you eat and i often see posts of people bragging about eating four or five hundred six hundred grams of carbs a day but on the other hand you know you could have someone down at 90 but it doesn't mean that they're not enjoying their food just as much uh if you're losing a pound a week at 90 grams of carbs and you're losing a pound a week at 500 grams of carbs, you're kind of feeling the same deficit, right? For the most part, uh, people have different psychology and how they handle that, but it, it really has become a little overblown where it's been a competition on how you eat. But one of the biggest things we have to consider is that can work for some people but there's this whole component of thermic effect of food and whole foods have shown that we will actually burn more calories by eating that food and digesting that food versus like if we have a pop tart or something like that. But I also think that a pop tart can go a long way in adherence for somebody versus somebody who's just eating the same stuff every day. And that's just it. It has to work both ways. This is, a, this is an issue that cuts both ways because we have to be principled about our food. If, if we're in this, even in a small level for our health, you know, don't you think higher quality foods and lower glycemic carbs, whole food sources are going to be better? And they're probably going to keep your adherence and your compliance better. Your hunger cravings are going to be better because of exactly what you're describing. But if you don't allow yourself that indulgence when you need it, that form of flexibility, that's where you can get in trouble. So I, I had incredible success with my own contest dieting when I would do things like, like allow myself a half a cup of fat-free frozen yogurt every night. You know, I would put a scoop of protein powder in with that, half a cup, weighed out, measured out, and it was amazing. But mm -hmm. it didn't lead to a cup or two cups or a, an entire can of Hershey's syrup on top of it. It was always that, and that was the indulgence that I compromised with. And, and you know, we could go on and on, but I think your point is exactly perfect, Adam. Yeah, I think a lot of people think that macros didn't work for them because they didn't have any self-control. And a lot of us as macro coaches will help, uh, which we'll probably get into flexible structure. And uh, I'll just leave it at that.
for now. <laughs> yeah, it really, it really is all about finding the amount of principled eating with flexibility that works for you. Because at the end of the day, you said it perfectly, Adam, it's about how you look on the stage. And if it's not working for you, something's wrong. And, and sometimes we need to add more structure. So you're right. We'll get into that next time. Uh, and and uh, you guys stay tuned. We're going to go through a couple more episodes really describing how you can use flexibility in your own way to make sure you succeed.